I honestly can't believe it's the finale. I remember being intimidated by reacting to a show with 61 episodes. Now, I wish it would never end. But here we are. It's the finale. I'm very excited. We're going to do the intro for old time's sake. Water. That is such a cool thing to do. Earth. Maybe life could actually be like Fire. That's good. Cool. Air. Air. Long ago, the four <laughs> nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when, when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, what? an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. Ah, I can't believe it's over! <laughs> Very exciting. Finale, go. Sozin's Comet, Part 1, The Phoenix King. Nice, they're still on Ember Island. Now let me hear you roar like a tiger dillo! That sounded pathetic. Nice, he's getting it. Who wants a nice, cool glass of watermelon juice? Ooh, ooh, me, me, me! Hey, you're Finish your training. Over yet. Yeah. Get back here! It's so nice to see Aang using fire well. I wish we had more time with him as a full avatar, but it's okay. Sitting around the house has made us pretty lazy. But I know just the thing to change that. Beach party! Smoothing out the wrinkles. <laughs> this is a lot lighter in tone than I was expecting from the start of this episode. But maybe this is the last we'll she get, so that's good. Sculpture. That's really good. Not bad, Baldi. Is that a to scale model of Bossing <gasps> Say? Oh, you got the bear. <laughs> Blubbering blob monster? No, it's Suki! <laughs> <laughs> Looks just like her. No, Sand Appa! <laughs> Get a grip before he blasts you off this roof! Go ahead and do it! Good teacher. The thought just occurred to me, we've come full circle, because I think the first fight that they ever had was also Aang running away. This fight takes on so much meaning because it's like, they've gone from enemies to friends, they've become teacher and pupil, and they have a shared goal now instead of being enemies. It's a nice feeling. Also, they've become so much more powerful. There you go. Right back. Why are you all looking at me like I'm crazy? About Sozin's Comet, I was actually going to wait to fight the Fire Lord until after it came. I need more time to master firebending. Mm. And frankly, your earthbending could still use some work too. So it seems like we're revisiting the issue we saw in the episode right before they invaded the Fire Palace about stress and feeling underprepared and anxiety. Aang sort of seems to be avoiding a little bit again. You know, he never feels quite ready. You all knew Aang was going to wait? Honestly, if Aang tries to fight the Fire Lord right now, he's going to lose. No offense. Yikes. Things can't get any worse. It's about to get worse than you can even imagine. The day before the eclipse, my father asked me to attend an important war meeting. The people of the Earth Kingdom are proud and strong. They can endure anything as long as they have hope. Yes, you're right. Crush we their hope. We need to destroy their hope. I will use its power to end the Earth Kingdom. Permanently. And I am the supreme ruler of everything. If you've watched the reaction series up to this point, you know I'm always trying to find humanizing traits in the characters. I'm having some trouble right now. I think that whole thing crossed a key line where before he was evil, but he seemed rational. He was trying to win a war. He was trying to conquer. Uh, he was trying to finish what his ancestors started. This seems more like just insanity than actual planning. My whole life I struggled to gain my father's love and acceptance, but once I had it, I realized I lost myself getting there. I'd forgotten who I was. In that episode when he went to that council meeting, I remember wondering about it. It seemed like a very important moment not to show, since it was at one of those meetings that he offended his father and got burned. And so I was curious to know what happened, and then they kind of glossed over it, and Zuko just said it went well. But that does add something to explain why Zuko had the sudden change of heart he did. It's interesting they saved it until now to show that. Why didn't you tell me about your dad's crazy plan sooner? Yeah, that's what I said. You don't have to do this alone. Yeah, 
If we all fight the Fire Lord together, we got a shot at taking him down. Team Avatar is back! Air, water, earth, fire, spam and sword! Fighting the Fire Lord is gonna be the hardest thing we've ever done together, but I wouldn't want to do it any other way. I mean, even without Aang, Toph and Katara are two deadly forces, so... Being part of the group also means being part of group hugs. Yay, they accepted him. What a long road it's been. At the last possible moment. Yeah, don't forget Appa, damn. There's one technique you need to know before facing my father. How to redirect lightning. Oh, nice. Have you ever redirected lightning before? Once. Against my father. What did it feel like? Exhilarating. So amazing. So amazing. But terrifying. Yes, it's so awesome. But you know if you make the wrong move, it's over. Well, not over over. I mean, there's always Katara and a little spirit water action, am I right? Actually, I, I used it a lot after it. Azula shot you. Yep. Stakes are higher. Or in this case, the Melon Lord. Our timing has to be perfect. Oh, Aang swoops in and BAM! He delivers the final blow. <laughs> Legit, that's really good training. If you can get past Toph, you can... If you can dodge a Toph, <laughs> you can dodge a Nozai. Yeah, she was the right person for this job, for sure. I am Melon Lord! <laughs> and that's how Toph learned to firebend. Oh, he can't do it. He can't even kill Melon Lord. How are you gonna kill Ozai? Take him out! Bash his head in. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just didn't feel right. I didn't feel like myself. And he's not a killer. There! That's how it's done. Somehow Momo eating that watermelon was super graphic. The episode with Katara, the Southern Raiders, set an interesting precedent for not wanting to perpetuate the cycle of violence. And it's especially right for Aang not to want to do that. I mean, he's a, just a good kid, like, he doesn't want to kill anybody. He didn't want any of this, come to think of it. I have a surprise for everyone! I knew it! You did have a secret thing with Haru! Haru? Uh, no. I was looking for cooking pots in the attic, and I found this! Look at Aww. baby Zuko! It's my father. But he looks so sweet and innocent. Oh no. Well, that sweet That's little awkward. kid grew up to be a monster. Fire Lord Ozai is a horrible person, but there's gotta be another way. Maybe we can make some big pots of glue, and then I can use glue bending to stick his arms and legs together. Then you can show him his baby pictures, and all those happy memories will make him good again. <laughs> Do you really think that would work? <laughs> no! Aw, poor Aang. I can't just go around wiping out people I don't like. Mm -hmm. Sure you can. We're trying to help. Then wouldn't you figure out a way for me to beat the Fire Lord without taking his life? I'd love to hear it! Don't walk away from this! Let him go. He needs time to sort it out by himself. Hmm. Huh. Wow. It is something only Anne can figure out, because I think the issue is with him. You know, it's a question of doing what other people want and following what seems practical versus his own inner compass, his own ethics. I definitely can sympathize with Aang on this issue because while I do understand the pragmatic side to it, like Ozai is evil and he's going to do a lot of harm, I think that there's something to be said for ethical principles that come before doing bad things to achieve a desired result. There's a couple reasons for that. One of it is you don't know the net effect of all your actions. It's never gonna be known to you. The only thing you can really trust in is your own conscience. Another thing to it is that you don't want to become the evil you're trying to destroy. It's true that Ozai killing the entire Earth Nation is bigger in scale and in some ways objectively worse than Aang just killing Ozai, right? The results differ, but the rationale is similar. It's still killing for a desired effect. And the danger in that is that you risk being horribly wrong. There's an arrogance to believing that you know who should die, you know, you know who should be the one to be killed. And I think those sorts of things in real life tend to come full circle. It just creates vengeance, but more violence. I'm not against Aang killing him necessarily, but I am against Aang aiming to kill him as a means to an end, and doing that despite his conscience telling him not to. Hey, Momo. I don't suppose you know what I should do. Uh, I didn't think so. I don't know if you can even decide these things. I feel like when you get to this moment, the only thing you can do is just show up and be there and just trust that what you've built will carry you there. I'm to four. I love this chanting. Hmm, what was that thing? 
He's definitely on a spirit world journey. But if he was, wouldn't his body still be here? Oh yeah. Oh, forgot yeah. about that. I forgot about that too. Let's split up and look for him. I'm going with Zuko. What? Zoof. <laughs> Everyone else went on a life-changing field trip with Zuko. Oh, that's great. They're just killing it with these self-aware moments where they know exactly what they are. Now it's my turn. That'd be cool. I'm down. Oh, it's Aang being the, the incorrigible prankster. Avatar's date! You did it! Oh, no. <laughs> and then when I was nine, I ran away again. Uh-huh. I know I shouldn't complain. My parents gave me everything I ever asked for. But they never gave me the one thing that I really wanted. Their love. You know what <sighs> I mean? <laughs> I know you had a rough childhood, but we should really focus on finding Aang. This is the worst field trip ever. Yeah, it is. They'll always have that nice moment in the theater. It's interesting that she looks up to Zuko and seems to have a crush on him. They do have similarities. They both had overbearing parents. They both had to find their own identities outside of their families. So maybe she feels like he's actually someone she can share that side of herself with, which is something I think she actually wants. I think she does have some vulnerability issues and worries about romance. We saw that earlier in the Ba Sing Se episode where the girls made fun of her makeup. That's kind of, that's tough, kind of exploring that side of herself a little bit, allowing herself to be vulnerable, seeking affection. Those are things that are tough, 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 difficult. What should we do, Zuko? I don't know. Why are you all looking at me? Well, you are kind of the expert on tracking Aang. Yeah. If anyone's got experience hunting the Avatar, it's you. Interesting that Zuko's become sort of the de facto leader of the group. Why are we heading towards the Earth Kingdom? There's no way Aang's there. Just trust me. What's going on? I, I don't really have any theories. She looks pissed. She's salty. Bitter Azula. There has been a change of plans, Azula. What? I've decided to lead the fleet of airships to Ba Sing Se alone. You will remain here in the Fire Nation. But I thought we were going to do this together. My decision is final. Oh no. I deserve to be by your side! Oh, she's lost it. I still get all these comments saying that my theories about Azula are wrong, that she's just evil, period. But for me, there's just so much evidence that Azula is just a product of her environment, and she acts this way because of the value system she was raised in. She was praised by her father, who is the king of her world, and so for her, that's the highest ideal. The reason she's able to do such terrible things is because it's all in the name of protecting and building that world that she's in, the world that she values. The problem is, that world used to be a lot bigger. It used to include her brother and her two best friends, and now that they've betrayed her, it really only is her father. So it makes sense why she's going to cling extra hard to her father's love and attention right now. Any negative sign that her father gives her is going to be blown up because her entire world is, is at stake right now. She's learned that the things she values can just disappear in a moment. Her whole world is crashing down around her. I need you here to watch over the homeland. It's a very important job that I can only entrust to you. Really? And for your loyalty, I've decided to declare you the new Fire Lord. Wow. I shall be reborn as the supreme ruler of the world. From this moment on, I will be known as the Phoenix King. Eh, not bad. You could do better. Yeah, he just lost it. He's just super into his own power now. <laughs> I remember her. Oh yeah, that weird bounty hunter with the giant mole. Oh yeah, she can track Aang. Where is he? Hey, Momo. He's just, he's in the secret garden somehow. Where are we? Yeah. Is Patik involved somehow? Alright, that's the end of episode one. I'll see you for episode two.